Nigeria is still far from an electoral process that will be the envy of all. In this search for credible electioneering, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has vowed to go ahead with electronic transmission of election results in coming polls. INEC says it does not need the approval of the Nigeria Communication Commission, NCC, to do that as the National Assembly's decision to subject its constitutional power to conduct elections to the NCC is absolutely unconstitutional. Some Nigerians are backing the commission on this, mm -hmm. as TVC News' Nelson Eta tells us in this Journalist Hangout Weekend Special. To be or not to be, this has been the raging debate on the use of electronic transmission of results by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, for the 2023 elections in Nigeria. In a political move described by many as self-serving, the National Assembly passed the amendment to the Electoral Act, but rejected the section on electronic transmission of results by INEC. The lawmakers stated that electronic transmission of results can only be approved by the Nigeria Communications Commission, NCC. The NCC believes that Nigeria is not prepared for electronic transmission of election results. But does INEC, as an independent agency, require the permission of the National Assembly or the NCC before it can deploy technology for electronic transmission of results? In Edo and Ondo, INEC literally transmitted results from the polling units. What they had done was using the smart, the, um, the ZPAD technology. Results from polling units were uploaded on the INEC results platform. And we saw that work in Edo and in Ondo 2020. Now, what, what did Edo and Ondo teach us? That INEC can actually <laughs> transmit results from polling units with the right technology, if allowed to do that. Why this became a debated issue was because a lot of groups have been advocating that the electoral law, electoral act, should recognize or rather give INEC the power to electronically transmit results just so that it is not regarded as an INEC policy, but rather a matter of law. If you're running your office and you find out that um, using Excel is easier than using a manual ledger, you don't need to write a policy to say from this day forth, we of this organization shall hereby be using Excel. You just move to Excel and you continue your work because it's more efficient, it's faster, it's easier, and everybody gets on with it. But we found out that our politicians, as you've said, need the law to get them to do the right things or in a sense to constrain them to do the right things. Because otherwise, INEC should be able to just issue guidelines and so say, oh, okay, we've found out that this works better. This is what we're going to do. And everybody keeps it moving. But we realize that if it's not encoded as part of the law, then they find ways around it or then they kick against it. But at least it's better for those of us on the other side if there's actually an enabling law that allows us to hold them accountable. Until the Electoral Act as amended is signed by the president, the Nigerian constitution does not recognize the card reader nor electronic transmission of election results. Can these influence or cause litigations if the need arises? The purpose of this electoral tra transmission is that to have a consistent pattern by which election can be transmitted and the other party, the litigant, the lawyer challenging the, any kind of a dubious electoral result can rely on those data to challenge those results. But in circumstances where the constitution has refused to give backing or where there's no for any statutory provision backing the electoral transmission, it makes that point so weak. It makes it so, so weak for you to rely on that when you are in the course of litigation. If the goal is to conduct credible elections, what then is wrong with transmitting election results live? Now we have two separate versions. The House of Rep has a version, Senate has a version. I think it's the Senate version that's trying to make it 
um, on that NCC. The levels of thinking in their desperation to do these things shows you how far they are willing to go. When the election is being counted in America, we all watch it live from CNN. How the election has been transmitted, everybody's getting figure. Why should we even need that to be our law in the first place? Because the high neck has power, so many power under the constitution to control the election. There should be the one determining whether, oh, we can use, we can conduct this election by, by virtue of the electoral pro, uh, uh, electronic process. And when you look at the section 160 of the constitution, it's a very strong provision of law. When you look at that section, that, 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 that section is saying, look, the president can give rules, regulations to almost all other agencies in Nigeria, except INEC. The law of Nigeria today, the constitution says that, look, the president cannot even impose on INEC the way they should do things. Talk less of, uh, we have NCC. And who is NCC to the power given to INEC by the constitution? To be telling INEC that this is where you can conduct election electronically, this is where you cannot. At the just concluded local government elections in Kaduna State, the process of voting and transmission of results were fully electronic. Governor Nasir Arafai recommended the use of electronic voting system and transmission of results in the next general election. Shown in Kaduna is that it is possible to do this across Nigeria. And I think we are hopeful, we are encouraged. We believe that technology is the key to minimizing cheating in elections and unless we remove cheating in elections we will never have credible leaders we will never have accountable leaders and this is why we are committed to this the chairman of kaduna state independent electoral commission also spoke on the ease of operating the electronic voting device my voters card i will now bring it here you see i didn't even have to touch the machine and now i'm supposed to highlight it please press the ok button on the right bottom of the EVM to submit your vote. Okay, this is the one I selected, so I'll press OK. Now on the left here, you see the receipt being generated, and you see the APM logo, and it has dropped into the ballot of the... Many political analysts believe that the 2023 general elections will be a referendum on the promise by the All Progressives Congress, APC, to strengthen the electoral system and regain the trust of Nigerians in the electoral process. The question then is, will the APC keep that promise? Nelson Etta, TVC News, Lagos. You see, on two journalists hang out on Sunday, and I see how Babajili Koladi Utitoju and Adekunle Yusuf in the studio. Chile, moving on now, 2023 in 2019 you know we are always part of the process as in you will be in the studio you'll be doing your analysis i will be on the field and those whining session of collecting the form ec8a trying to use calculator from one local government to another local government trying to do it manually and at the end of the day you know it's just a whole hell of a mess but if we are proving, uh, if we are pushing for improvement, we've seen what the, the telecoms can do. We've seen the exploits that the, we've made since the advent of telecommunications into Nigeria. And some people will say, oh, in their hometown, they don't have network. But um, there was a senator who claimed that in his hometown that there's no network and members, I mean residents of his community came out to say you are a liar. <laughs> you are a liar. <laughs> there is network in our village. <laughs> don't lie. <laughs> you know? As we don't bring the, our village into this. <laughs> the capacity of the Nigerian uh, politician to lie, lie. is is it's just tremendous. You can't um, Because we understand the likes of Senator Alin Dume. A war torn, ravaged community, and everything. They don't even have the, the Boko Haram might have even destroyed all their masts there. We know because the capacity of Boko Haram to destroy the elections in Borno State are usually held in the IDP and most of the elections. Most of the elections, because what you find is a local government 
maybe they are just two towns where people are resident in you know, other towns have been destroyed people don't live there or in some mm -hmm. cases you you have you have a local government like um, guzamala local government not even soldiers are there no soldier at all you have a local government like Ad badam mm -hmm. there is not a single civilian resident there just soldiers alone that's the local government where they killed uh, colonel abu ali mm -hmm. that's my factory Mm. You know, Abadam. Majority of the residents have moved to Niger Republic. We have a huge presence of Nigerians who fled from Abadam to Niger Republic. Mm. I was discussing with their uh, lawmaker, also assembly member, the other day. There are people who are resident there. So, in such a place, no elections won't even take place at all. The people from that area. Local governments like Guzamala, that nobody lives in, not even soldiers are there. They go to um, the garrison town of Monguno to do their election inside the IDP camp there. They've already agreed that that's the way they are going to do it. You know? So you can understand if someone like that says, okay, um, we, we we can't do electronic but even that one even that one in the idp camp yeah, they use phone network yes the people use their phones even today, so even, even that one today, uh, even, mm, not to there are places where uh, the, the, the telcos had told us since 2018 that they can help and are in places where you remember the kaduna rec uh, kaduna independent uh, um, Electoral Commission uh, boss even saying that tel the, the tel 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 telcos have assured them that anywhere that they will be able to do electronic transmission. So we saw his Kaduna showed us that look with technology we can do these elections. The more the, the point I'm trying to make is that the more we remove human influence from the conduct of our elections, human intervention and use technology then the more our elections will get better but what the situation in which people are still stuck with the past years of rigging they still they have not uh, cleansed their blood of years of rigging they are going to tell you that no technology is a waste of time no no we have to do it in this way what can what can anyone do about that and there is no part of this country now where you don't have this uh, uh, paga or what uh, or the uh, pos yes. you go to the village the pos works everywhere people can know. get money and they, what do they use it's still a uh, network now so if in the remote village people can uh, receive their alert you know one politician was telling me he said see these are liars that we in our constituencies we transfer money they receive alert in those constituencies where we are claiming that uh, there is no network <laughs> How do people receive the alert? We send money to them, they receive. Is it the fear of um, the fear of losing the election or we just don't want to move forward? Or we are considering or boats. boats or we are considering look, my people, that if we adopt this system, it will automatically disenfranchise or there's a tendency that it will disenfranchise the, the large chunk of would be voters. I see it as a reflection of the caliber of people we have in the political space. People who are more okay. interested. Okay, let me quickly um, take a board member of Yaga Africa, Ize Wagu. Thank you for joining us, Ize Wagu. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you, Ize. I know you are on, on transit. Now, we've covered election together from Anambra four years ago, everywhere, all the states we've been to, and you've seen the process. And Yaga Africa is at the forefront of advocating for, you know, electoral reforms. But the, our National Assembly, the way it's looking, we might not be able to deploy for 2023. But why INEC is saying that we have the capacity to deploy these electronic voting devices? Mm. Yeah, don't transmission. Yeah, I, I, I think if you can hear me, I think it's. Um, I followed the conversation. I, I think what's what we need to 
be clear about is that we need to temper that conversation so that we don't create uh, we, we don't create unnecessary excitement. Uh, we have to approach our conversation in a manner that puts INEC uh, not to not to uh, give uh, complicity uh, to the exuberance that INEC is currently being that it can you know overcome the challenges that technology technology is a challenge in election and we must we must gradually engage that conversation in a way that provides us uh, the shock absorber for the kind of uh, challenges that we face i i listened to colleagues in the studio who were talking about that in so many in every village there are villages that you send money to and they will not get money until three days or four days after that is the reality we either you were in two um this the technology was deployed in the Edo election what was covered was less than 66 percent of of that state many of the many part of that state were not i was not able to um uh, do electronic transmission of results to do electronic transmission of results so we need to uh i think approach this conversation in a more nuanced manner than that than i'm seeing also do. the second point is that let us also realize that the the, the put community collusion in election is real where community uh, politically exposed persons town unions district heads uh ambush electoral officials and ensure that they do not follow process and procedure and with agreement of party agents um, so I'm, I'm just throwing this out as some cautionary um scheme to be able to understand that the crisis is not just uh the way we have seen it we have seen INEC tell us we are ready for elections where everything is ready and then we postpone elections and when we postpone nobody takes responsibility nobody comes to say this is it. It's we paper over it. The next election, we are we are told that we are hundred percent ready. So let us also listen to those who are raising concerns. It's important that we listen to those who are raising concerns and see how we can follow those concerns to approach elections in a way that can give us the outcome that we expect. That having said that, INEC is constitutionally called independent national electoral commission but the challenge is that our election is governed by law many jurisdictions the election is not a law driven process INEC in ghana i mean the, the electoral commission in ghana does not require the national assembly to pass any law to give it power to conduct election but today we are in the national assembly seeking electoral reforms so if you have to go to the national assembly to seek reforms to seek improvements in your election you should be careful that it is also politicians that are in the national assembly and so we continue to put the pressure and make sure that they do that which you know uh, will improve elections because politicians are driven by interest whether from the north or the south or the east it is that interest is about winning elections and they are the ones we go to because our election is law driven to give us laws that will improve our elections that is the tragedy that we are in so we we need to understand carefully that if you have a law driven election you need to be careful how much you say i next you just go ahead and do what it likes then the judiciary is waiting for you the in 2015 the judiciary gave a knock a very big knock on the card reader they said the card reader is not recognized by law and so we had to approach the National Assembly again to say, look, can you mainstream this and give INEC the power to deploy whatever technology it can to, to, to administer elections? So the challenge is the kind of a process that we run in our country. We have to always, for INEC to get money, it has to go to the National Assembly. It, 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 while it is called independent, it has to be a right. operation for, 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 for its resources has to go to the National Assembly. So these are just some of the huge challenges that we face. So I'm just saying, Thank you.
Thank you, Ezewagu. Ezewagu is a board member of Yaga Africa. Thank you, in spite of that short um, uh, notice. So, gentlemen, moving towards 2023, mm. I don't know, is it done and dusted? That's... No, the... They have already said they will not agree to electronic trade transmission, but we saw electronic transmission work in, in Edo State, Edo. and they made the election very transparent. And Undo. In fact, people already had an idea of who had won. Yes, in the you afternoon. Know, before the end of... Uh, the afternoon. Uh, you know, and then in Undo too, it worked. Yeah. So are people saying that um, Undo and Edo are probably the only states in Nigeria where it can work. No, they don't they even INEC even told us that they conducted some off-season elections mm -hmm. in some very remote parts of the north. Mm -hmm. An electronic transmission was used. You know those by elections that they do. Mm -hmm. That very remote. Mm -hmm. So except we are saying, oh, that um, we uh, those elections that something is wrong with those elections all the, that we are after is let's have transparent elections you had the governor of Kaduna state saying it, that you can't have good leaders if you don't have good elections politicians have a feeling that they don't need you that they will win election whether you like it or not we must not be found in that kind of situation mm -hmm. if politicians know that they can't win any election without the electorate they will work, work for hard, the people. They, for work, the people. they want to keep their positions. Mm. They work for the people. But if they can simply win elections by rigging, blatant rigging, you know, shooting people, uh, uh, snatching ballot boxes in today's world, mm. we are still snatching ballot boxes in our country. Mm. And we still want to stick with the past. I mean, it's, it's, it's really unfortunate. Adukuli, the last thing on this. Politicians should just uh, think about our country and. Uh, Maybe self interest should just calm down. The way they are doing, Nigerians are not happy. We want credible elections so that we can have credible leadership. Hmm. All right.